Hello crafters, this is Suzanne from A Creative Muse and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Glossy Accents, this wonderful product from Ranger, to create these two toppings. Alrighty, let's bust out the Glossy Accents, tweezer, and maybe even some readers so you can see, and some wonderful sprinkles. Let's get started. Give your embellishment that glossy pop and also how to attach ephemera because this ephemera the glossy accent acts like a glue in terms of holding it to in place and it's just all goodness this is that example that i showed you from cat scrappiness it is a die set scoop of love that's this set which i recently hauled from cat scrappiness and also from her new release this one the donut builder that's on this example right here so I could use the glossy accents here or here, either way, even on this piece, on anything really. But I'm gonna show you how to make it work because when you spread glossy accents this wide, it has a tendency of curling because of the medium that it is. So you have to set it in place first before you proceed. I have a card base here and it's a top folding card base, 110 pound cardstock, double layered. So this is white 110 pound cardstock pink basil, and then just a piece of pattern paper cut with cat scrappiness. Can't remember the name of this die. I'll put it on the screen. All right, I'm going to write down all the names of her dies on here. It's not on the packaging. So uh, I want to say zigzag. But so even though that's a slim line, I just, you know, cut it in half. This card measures almost um, four and three quarter inch tall by three and three quarter inch wide. And I did cut out just like this. I did brown paper. This is that basil mud pie right here. And I used my Sizzix machine to cut it. So I use the Sizzix transfer and emboss folder to just get more detail on that um, embossed image. You, you see the nice print without breaking the paper. Super cute. I do have two. I made a shorter one and also from the Donut Builder. So this is from the Scoop of Love. That's from Donut Builder. Let's see how the tutorial proceeds, if I'll do one or if I'll do two. All right. All right, so then now I have all my little toppings. So what you're gonna do, prepare your card base. Get your die cut ready. So that would be the heart, the topper. I like to put 110 pound dimension and then the topper just like I did here to give it stability. If I use a thin cardstock here on the top, let's say I did it this way. Use my glossy accent, which is a product from Ranger. Put it on here alone. This will dry and it'll curl. It'll you can also use Nouveau Crystal Glaze. I do have this. I'm not a big fan of it because I can't control it for me. If you can control this better than glossy accent, go which whichever one works for you they're both pretty much the same thing i just prefer glossy accent that's the one that i started crafting with that's the one i'm sticking with same thing here donut builder still 110 pound and this instance i did glitter card stock so first prepare your card i wouldn't do the embellishment like this and then put on the glossy accent it suits you to have it ready to go on the surface. So let me go ahead and put this on. I'm not going to use wet glue. Okay, I'm going to Zoom my camera down. I'm going to use scrapbook.com quarter inch double-sided tape. I just wanted something. I didn't really want to use wet glue. You could. I'm going to use wet glue actually, funny enough, on the top part with 110 pound cardstock. If you're doing like foil cardstock, I wouldn't use wet glue. I would go back into using score tape or this type of double-sided tape, okay? Just ignore that I sound all nasally. The weather, it's cold outside and it looks like, again, I may be getting another cold. Yay. <laughs> I can't dodge these things, folks. When the weather changes so drastically, 80 degrees yesterday and now coming down into the 40s, oh, it does a number on me. It really does. So if I don't sound so great, I'm trying to move the tape backing, adhere it down center. Let me come about here. Am I good? Uh, kind of good. There. Am I better? Yeah. All right. <laughs> 
You just don't know how hard it is to be overhead like this. Okay, now to do this glossy accent, I'm going to use, I have a pair of readers that I got at Walmart. I believe this is either 1.75 or 2.0. You know, carry something with small print to Walmart. I like to use this type of thing when I'm looking at this, especially at this height with me filming. Normally I'm right overhead and my head would be here, but I'm gonna do my best to do it at this level. Tweezer, get a good tweezer because you're gonna use tweezer for all your little bits, embellishment bits. Here I'm using the Cat Scrappiness Heart Sprinkles. I have a pack of clay sprinkles. This I believe is from AliExpress. I also have some hot pink. Have my little embellishment tray here. Trinity stamps, embellishment tray. Okay, crafters, so what I'm doing, putting a 110 pound base, then cardstock on top, all right? And I'm using my Barely Art glue to apply it. And you want good adhesion, all right? So edge to edge, pretty much. I could have used Sizzix adhesive sheets here. It won't lift with that, but wet glue too works. Ooh, look at that. What is that? Get that little piece out. Oh, you know, this drives me crazy, right? Right there. Let that set for a little bit. You can put a weight on it if you want. Use an acrylic block if you want. Get the second one ready. That'll be this one. Now, at this point, you can decide if you want to do something like that, like a double layer. I'm going to just go straight on. And normally, I like to put with basil, I would put the textured cardstock here on the top, but because it'll show, I just think the texture will take away from the, you know, the little embellishments. So I'm putting it on the back side of the cardstock, actually. <laughs> so what is on top is actually the back of the basil cardstock, the smooth side. And let that set up. Oh, maybe I'm using too much glue. There we go. Just lift it off gently with your finger. There we go. I'm getting a lot of seepage. Seeping. So now you have your piece glued on. Okay, let that set up. While I'm at it, I'm also going to just glue this done. This one I'm going to do wet glue for the whole entire thing. Let me see what happens with the wet glue. For the base and everything. Next layer, 110 pound, in wet glue again. You know, I did actually use Sizzix adhesive sheet. I don't know why I'm torturing myself with wet glue, but I am wet glue. And then even on the back of this, if this was metallic foil, I wouldn't use wet glue because the wet glue sometimes will show ridges through the foil. I would have used Sizzix adhesive sheet. It can, once it cures, it'll hold with the glossy accents on top, all right? There we go. Now the thing about glossy accents too, when you use glossy accents on glitter like this, what it will do, it will dull down the glitter actually. It'll have shine, but it won't be so sparkly because it's gonna put like an epoxy layer on top of it. All right, let me close up my glue and let's go ahead and do the first one. Glossy accents comes like this. There's also another alternative, crackle accents. Same glossy accent, with a kind of a crackle. Once it dries, it'll start cracking. So there are two versions of it, actually. This is if you want a different look. This is the traditional look, okay? And some people use this as a glue too, because it can hold. Once it dries, it'll hold. That's why it works with these. It'll hold it in place. Let me pour out some of these little bits. Here's some of my hearts. And... Yeah, let me go for some of this too, why not? And get a good pair of tweezers. One of my favorite tweezers is this Elizabeth Craft Design Tweezer. Very sharp, very precise. Just feels like an extension of my hand, as if my fingers are putting it on. That's the kind of tweezer you want, the one that feels good in your hand. For me, it's this, okay? All right, so I have all my tools ready, got my glasses on. Now we're gonna start with the glossy accent. Once you go for it, just keep going. Don't 
stop too much or you're going to get the bubbles, all right? I'm going to start from the left side, working over to the right side. Just go like this. Don't go all the way over the edge. Just stay on and color. I like to do like this. Color it in. Yes, it is thick. Don't worry about it. But see how when I do it like this, how I'm not getting bubbles because I'm not stopping. Once you start stopping, that's when you come into trouble with this. You'll start seeing a ton of bubbles and stuff like that. If some goes over the edge, I think I just did it a while ago. I'll get it at the end and I'll use my finger to pull it up. There goes one bubble. It's like coloring. I'm squeezing and coloring at the same time. Hopefully I'm not blocking the view. So you guys get a good look at what I'm doing. Going to turn it a little bit so you can see. See that edge there? That's how I do it, okay? So now, I like to keep a pin, and this was a tip I learned from a crafter when I first started crafting. Right here, I think it bled over a little bit. Take your finger, push it up. You could also take the pin, bring it out a little bit. You could bring this down a little bit here if you want. Just use a pin. But see how smooth that is? Oh, this is actually pretty good. I had to get a new bottle of Glossy Accent because I was using the wrong pin in my last bottle and my other bottle was so old. Here, I need to come out some more to the edge. I just use a pin a little bit. Push it out, push it out, push it out. Oh, this is actually pretty good, guys. Look how clear that is. Hardly any... Okay, see how once I came back in, see how I got a bubble? Take your pin, pop the bubble, if you get a bubble in there. Just pull it out a little bit. Okay. See how it's... Ooh! Wrinkle. Wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. No wrinkle. Wrinkle, no good. There we go. All right. So that's glossy accent. That's how fast you have to work and just go for it. Don't think about it. It's a sort of a squeeze, squeezing and moving. Let me come on up close now to the camera with it. See, look at that. But you have to go for it. Don't think about it. Don't stop. When you stop and hesitate, that's when you're going to get a ton of bubbles. Just like you're coloring with a crayon, but you're squeezing and coloring at the same time. See, I went in there and I do have one little bubble. Pop that bubble. If you can't pop the bubble, then you're going to put one of the embellishments on top of it. <laughs> Although that's all the way to the top. There we go. See that little edge that I didn't finish? There we go. See how it's smooth out? Practice. All right, now we're going to put in the embellishments. That's where this comes in. Take your tweezer, like so, and we're going to gently kind of drop. Don't push it in. There, see how I laid it on? I just laid it on. There we go. I think there's something on my tweezer. Something sticky on my tweezer. I don't know what. I must have had some wet glue on my tweezer. Yeah, I think I have wet glue on my tweezer, which is like glue that dried, I mean. There we go. A little bit of red. Should I do red? I don't like the red. I like the hot pink. I am feeling this hot pink. All right, I'm going to speed through this. But see how I'm kind of like dropping it on? That's how you want to do it. Just kind of figure where you want it to be and drop. Don't push it in. Just lay it on the top. The If you push it in, it's going to want to cover it. So don't push it. Just lay it. The adhesive properties of it will do the rest, okay? Not hard, but quite fun. <laughs> See how cute that is? And I'll do a photo to show you what it looks like at the end. This is going to take a little while. Put it in a spot where nobody can touch it, where you won't even accidentally touch it. If you keep it close to your work surface, you may accidentally touch it and then you're going to ruin it.
Oh, this is so cute. I'm loving this hot pink. Are you liking this hot pink? I'm liking this hot pink. I'm turning the card so I don't have to... Me pop one here in that spot right there. That's where the bubble was. <laughs> Look at that. And then you let it dry and cure. So I think that's good enough. You get the gist. You see? That's how you set it up, but you have to come in super fast with it. Had one little boo-boo there, but it, or is it right there? Right there, but that's not bad. But in terms of bubbles, see how I don't have bubbles? Alrighty, let's go on to the next one. Um, let's do glitter. All right, get your glossy accent ready. Why do I have a pin? This nozzle can clog up, so you just use just a regular pin. My mistake on my last bottle, I had used one of this type of pin with a head top. That messed up. It started to cut into here with the pressure of the cap. So it's, use a flat head pin, okay? Why am I not putting the pin up here? I don't want this stuff to dry on here and I can't see it. Then it messes up my beautiful craft mat. <laughs> All right, again, glossy accents coming in. See how it starts dulling the glitter? And I'm squeezing and coloring. It's a kind of a squeeze and color thing. You can go close to the edge. You don't have to go right up to it. Because if you go up to it, you, you may go over. See? Squeeze and color. Squeeze and color. Squeeze and color. And even though this is a lot of glossy accent, it will stay in place. That's the beauty of it. There we go. But you see how it dulled down the glitter? Glitter is still there, not as shiny. Pretty, right? You could sprinkle more glitter on the top here. Look at that. See? Pretty, pretty. And I noticed I needed that new bottle and I couldn't find any at um, Michael's. Couldn't find any at Hobby Lobby. So I had to go to Joanne's. Joanne's was the only place that has it. Found one little um, bubble, and I'm going to cover my bubble. I just popped it with this. If you get it on here, just wipe it because it will dry on your tweezer. And I believe I have something on my tweezer that just it's just needs a good cleaning. I probably use some undo to clean it. Same thing. Just drop it on there. It'll grab. There we go. Not another little one. There we go. And do I want hot pink? Eh, I don't like the hot pink. Pale pink? Maybe pale pink. Ooh, that's pretty. So these are some of those pale pink hearts. Maybe hard for you to see. Well, no, I think you can see it. But I am enjoying it up close and personal. There we go. You just want it to be flat, not sticking up. Don't push it all the way in, just a gentle, not even any pressure. Let the, let the glue do all the work. Look at that. There we go. One more. So pretty. I'm liking it with the glitter on the bottom and the, what do you guys think? Come on, get off of my, I'm going to clean this tweezer there is something on here that's acting like it's grabbing look at that cute and that is it you put this down pretty much overnight don't touch it and once it dries she'll be like these yep Alrighty, crafters, that is my tutorial on using glossy accents to make a topper on any project, any project. But the more area you're covering is the more you want to make sure that this thing is adhered down because once it dries, it'll want to curl in on itself. That's why I backed it with 110 pound cardstock on top of the embellishment itself. Okay, crafters, I hope you like my tutorial. Cute, and get this awesome die. I'm just loving it in the chocolate and also here in the brown. Okay, crafters, until the next video. <laughs> Stay crafty, my friends. Bye.